everybody, and welcome to NASCAR Now. I'm Mike Massaro, and it was the question everyone wanted answered. What was the substance that Jeremy Mayfield tested positive for? And Ryan McGee broke the story today. And joining us now is Ryan. And Ryan, first off, obviously this took a lot of work to confirm this story. Did anyone violate the gag order to uh, get this information to you? No, and I think that's important to understand. And it's also important to understand that, you know, myself, along with a lot of reporters from ESPN.com, the magazine, and, and everywhere else, we've been working on this since the announcement was made of the suspension at Darlington on, on back at the beginning of May. So, it, you know, no one violated the policy. There were independent sources that could not be revealed, but, but no one that, uh, that violated the gag order that was handed to them by the courts. All right, so take me through the process. How were you able to confirm this? Well, you start with the documents, and as soon as it got to court, a lot of documents became available. And, you know, I'm certainly no attorney, but sat down with lawyers, sat down with experts in the field of drug testing, uh, performance enhancing drugs, of uh, illegal recreational drugs, and started going through these things and talking about what does this look like? What does this sound like? And then once you had enough information, uh, you go out and you try to get it verified by somebody that you're pretty sure knows what's going on. Now, based upon your research, is it your understanding that Mayfield was under the influence while being behind the wheel? Well, it's certainly NASCAR's understanding, and they made that very clear in the countersuit that they filed just last Friday. What they claimed in that suit was that he violated his driver agreement with the sanctioning body by being on the racetrack under the influence of the substances that he tested positive for, and thus put people in danger and took money uh, literally out of the pockets of other drivers. That's what NASCAR's contention is. And, of course, Jeremy's contention is that uh, a combination of Claritin D and Adderall led to a false positive. Now, according to the sources you've spoken with, the authorities on this matter, is this possible? Uh, a very minute chance. It, you know, in the most rudimentary uh, urine-based drug screening program, there is a chance that a pseudoephedrine, which is the active ingredient in Claritin, uh, mixed with the amphetamines, uh, which is what Adderall is made of, could possibly look like a positive for methamphetamines. But then there's a second much more sophisticated uh, methamphetamine specific test uh, that we have to assume that AGE is conducted. We can't ask them that uh, uh, directly, AGES Labs in Nashville, because they are also subject to the gag order that was issued in court. Now, Ryan, just to clarify, what you're saying is that it, it is possible, but unlikely. Yes. Okay, it now, is very possible, but it is very unlikely. Okay. Uh, according to your sources, though, we're trying to break this whole thing down. Could this be classified mm -hmm. as a performance enhancer? Well, certainly Adderall can. Uh, you know, and any amphetamine uh, can be used as a performance enhancer. Talking to a lot of the experts in the field, they talk about heightened heart rates. But the biggest thing they talk about is uh, the concentration level that you just can't have unless it's chemically enhanced. You know, uh, in the Air Force, when uh, flyers go on, when, when uh, fighter pilots go out on big bombing runs, you know, those guys take what they, you know, they call like go pills. And that's the same kind of effect, which is a heightened alertness, a heightened awareness, and, and heightened reflexes, which certainly would help behind the wheel of a race car, I would assume. Now, Adderall, though, just to be clear, is not what Jeremy's being penalized for. It's not what Jeremy's being penalized for, as far as we know, although Adderall is a banned substance uh, by the World Doping Association. It is a banned substance by the NCAA, by Major League Baseball. Derek Lowe, just a few years ago, when he was with the Red Sox, had to receive special permission to take Adderall for attention deficit disorder. So it shows up on a lot of banned substances lists. Unfortunately, we don't know actually if it's banned by NASCAR or not because we haven't seen NASCAR's banned substances. That's a very good point. Hey, Ryan, thanks for your help today. Good work on this story. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. NASCAR now reached out to both NASCAR and Jeremy Mayfield's attorney, Bill Deal, along with Jeremy himself today for comment. NASCAR refused to comment, invoking the court-imposed gag order, and we have not heard back from either Jeremy Mayfield or his attorney. NASCAR driver and team owner Jeremy Mayfield hasn't backed down from a fight with NASCAR over a failed drug test. But NASCAR says it has more proof. Here's Dale Jewett with details. NASCAR claims Jeremy Mayfield has failed another drug test and is asking a U.S. District Court to reinstate his racing suspension. NASCAR says it found methamphetamines in a test sample taken from Mayfield on July 6th. But that may not be Mayfield's only problem. His race team's last employee, team manager Bobby Wooten, has quit and says that Mayfield has no real interest in racing again. 
In its court filing, NASCAR also includes comments from his stepmother, Lisa, who says she saw Mayfield use meth many times over the past seven years. Mayfield responded to the allegations quickly, saying he doesn't trust NASCAR or its drug testing company. He also says his stepmother is lying and makes it clear that he doesn't have a good relationship with her. In fact, he claims his stepmother is responsible for his father's shooting death. There is more on this story at AutoWeek.com. Wow, that's crazy. Thanks, Dale. NASCAR spiking drug test? That's what Jeremy Mayfield and his attorney say in new paperwork filed just a few hours ago. It's the latest round of what's become a very public battle over Mayfield's racing career. Good evening, I'm Brian Blakely. And I'm Morgan Fogarty, in for Rebecca Clark. One doctor says if Mayfield had the amount of meth in his system that NASCAR says he did, he'd be dead. It's tonight's top story. Tonight, Mayfield's attorneys say NASCAR violated government regulations with its July 6 drug screen a couple different ways, mainly by refusing to send a sample from Aegis, NASCAR's lab, to Mayfield's laboratory of choice. A second affidavit Mayfield's attorney filed tonight includes a more detailed look at drug test results from the same day NASCAR collected its most recent sample. This report shows Mayfield is clean not only for meth, but also marijuana, cocaine, opiates and other illicit drugs. The chief toxicologist in Broward County, Florida also submitted an affidavit tonight questioning the results of NASCAR's latest drug test. In my expert opinion, I do not believe that Aegis's test results revealing 67,000 nanograms per milliliter of methamphetamine could be remotely accurate, unless Mr. Mayfield was deceased or a chronic abuser. Dr. Schuler says he's been a part of more than three million urine tests in the past eight years. He says it's impossible for someone using meth at the levels allegedly found in Mayfield's system to not have physical signs like sunken eyes, rotting teeth, and an acne-like complexion. Take a look at Mayfield, shown here last Friday, and decide for yourself. If I was sitting here um, guilty, first of all, I wouldn't be fighting it. Because I know it's going to be a tough fight no matter what happens. The goal of tonight's filing is to keep a judge from going back on a previous decision that allows Mayfield on the track. One more note, Mayfield refutes all of his stepmom's accusations, including her claim that she saw him use drugs before the Darlington race in 1999. He won second place in that race and says that shows his competence. Channel 9's exclusive face-to-face -face interview with defiant NASCAR driver Jeremy Mayfield. Well, tonight he's defending himself against positive tests for methamphetamines and firing back with his own accusations against NASCAR. Good evening, I'm Vince Coakley. And I'm Erica Bryant. Now today, Eyewitness News reporter Alan Cavana went to Jeremy Mayfield's house. And Alan, the biggest question tonight on everyone's mind, how does he explain those positive test results? Well, Erica, for the last week I've been trying to get that answer, trying to get Jeremy Mayfield's side of the story. This afternoon in his driveway, I got that chance. Hey, Jeremy, Alan Cavana. From the driver's seat of his black pickup truck, Jeremy Mayfield went on the record about what NASCAR has called a history of drug use. Have you used methamphetamine? No, and I'm, I'm not going to say that anymore. I said, no, 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 I've never used methamphetamine. On Wednesday, NASCAR filed papers saying the driver tested positive once again for methamphetamine on July 6th. The documents even include an affidavit from the driver's stepmother that she's witnessed him use the drug at least 30 times, including once before a race at Darlington. Why do you think two tests came back for the positive use of methamphetamine? Well, why would you think 15 of them shows negative? We haven't seen those yet. I know, but we're going to see them. That's why I haven't been able to talk to you. Mayfield had choice words for his stepmother, claiming she conspired to kill his father in 2007 and that NASCAR paid her off to give the sworn testimony. Why would NASCAR do that? Why, why wouldn't they? I really don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Why <laughs> right. would NASCAR do well, something like that? For one, she needs money. She's called and she's trying to um, get money out of me several times. And, and you can see Mayfield had a camera of his own rolling. He says he's documenting everything and that it will one day prove his innocence. But we'll have to wait for that proof. For some, you got to imagine hard to believe well, that NASCAR would go to these lengths it, to it probably would be indict one driver. It probably would be hard to believe. But when it all comes out, you'll believe it. And I called Mayfield's lawyer and NASCAR officials for comment this afternoon. Neither of those calls were returned.